We all want to succeed, and one path to success is identifying the habits that can help us on our journey. I recommend starting that path by reading Stephen Covey's best-selling book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Don't have time to read all 432 pages? I get it. Most of us don't. That's why we have summarized the entire book for you. If you find this animation helpful, smash the subscribe and like button so that we can continue to craft such animations with love and care, especially for you. So, what habits do highly effective people have? This book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, opens with an explanation of how many individuals who have achieved a high degree of outward success still find themselves struggling with an inner need for developing personal effectiveness and growing healthy relationships with other people. Covey believes the way we see the world is entirely based on our own perceptions. In order to change a given situation, we must change ourselves. And in order to change ourselves, we must be able to change our perceptions. In studying over 200 years of literature on the concept of success, Kofi identified that in earlier times, the foundation of success rested upon character ethic, things like integrity, humility, fidelity, temperance, courage, justice, patience, and modesty. But Starting around the 1920s, the way people viewed success shifted to what Covey calls personality ethic, where success is a function of personality, public image, attitudes, and behavior. Now, people look for quick fixes. They see a successful person, team, or organization and ask, how do you do it? Teach me your techniques. But these shortcuts that we look for hoping to save time and effort and still achieve the desired result are simply band-aids that will yield short-term solutions. They don't address the underlying condition. The way we see the problem is the problem, writes Stephen Covey. We must allow ourselves to undergo paradigm shifts, to change ourselves fundamentally and not just alter our attitudes and behaviors on the surface level. In order to achieve true change, that's where the seven habits of highly effective people come in. Here is a brief summary of this book. Habits 1, 2, and 3 are focused on self-mastery and moving from dependence to independence. Habits 4, 5, and 6 are focused on developing teamwork, collaboration, and communication skills, and moving from independence to interdependence. Habit 7 is focused on continuous growth and improvement and embodies all the other habits. Now, let us discuss all the principle-centered seven habits in detail. Habit number one, be proactive. We're in charge. We choose the scripts by which to live our lives. Use this self-awareness to be proactive and take responsibility for your choices. The first of seven effective habits that Stephen Covey discusses is being proactive. What distinguishes us as humans from all other animals is our inherent ability to examine our own character, to decide how to view ourselves and our situations, and to control our own effectiveness. Put simply, in order to be effective, one must be proactive. Reactive people take a passive stance. They believe the world is happening to them. They say things like, there's nothing I can do. That's just the way I am. They think the problem is out there. But that thought is the problem. Reactivity becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and reactive people feel increasingly victimized and out of control. Proactive people, however, recognize they have responsibility or response ability, which Covey defines as the ability to choose how you will respond to a given stimulus or situation. In order to be proactive, we must focus on the circle of influence that lies within our circle of concern. In other words, we must work on the things we can do something about. The positive energy we exert will cause our circle of influence to expand. Reactive people, on the other hand, focus on things that are in their circle of concern, but not in their circle of influence which leads to blaming external factors, emanating negative energy, and causing their circle of influence to shrink. Now, challenge yourself to test the principle of proactivity by replacing reactive language with proactive language. 
For example, reactive is, he makes me so mad. Proactive is, I control my own feelings. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. Start with a clear destination in mind. Covey says we can use our imagination to develop a vision of what we want to become and use our conscience to decide what values will guide us. Most of us find it rather easy to busy ourselves. We work hard to achieve victories, promotions, higher income, more recognition. But we don't often stop to evaluate the meaning behind this busyness, behind these victories. We don't ask ourselves if these things that we focus on so intensely are really what matter to us. Habit 2 from The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey suggests that in everything we do, we should begin with the end in mind. Start with a clear destination. That way, we can make sure the steps we're taking are in the right direction. Beginning with the end in mind is also extremely important for businesses. Being a manager is about optimizing for efficiency. But being a leader is about setting the right strategic vision for your organization in the first place and asking, what are we trying to accomplish? Before we as individuals or organizations can start setting and achieving goals, we must be able to identify our values. This process may involve some rescripting to be able to assert our own personal values. Rescripting, Covey explains, is recognizing ineffective scripts that have been written for you and changing those scripts by proactively writing new ones that are built of your own values. Now, challenge yourself to test the principle of beginning with the end in mind by doing 1. Visualize in rich detail your own funeral. Who is there? What are they saying about you? About how you lived your life? About the relationships you had? What do you want them to say? Think about how your priorities would change if you had only 30 more days to live. Start living by those priorities. 2. Break down different roles in your life, whether professional, personal, or community, and list 3-5 to five goals you want to achieve for each. 3. Define what scares you. Public speaking, critical feedback after writing a book. Write down the worst case scenario for your biggest fear. Then visualize how you'll handle this situation. Write down exactly how you'll handle it. Habit number three, put first things first. In order to manage ourselves effectively, we must put first things first. We must have the discipline to prioritize our day-to-day -day actions based on what is the most important, not what is the most urgent. In Habit 2, we discuss the importance of determining our values and understanding what it is we are setting out to achieve. Habit 3 is about actually going after these goals and executing on our priorities on a day-to-day -day and moment-to-moment -moment basis. In order to maintain the discipline and the focus to stay on track towards our goals, we need to have the willpower to do something when we don't want to do it. We need to act according to our values rather than our desires or impulses at any given moment. Viewers, Mr. Smart has crafted a complete video about the time management matrix which Stephen Covey has explained in his book. Don't forget to watch this video using the link above in card or below in the description. Habit number four, think win-win. In order to establish effective interdependent relationships, we must commit to creating win-win situations that are mutually beneficial and satisfying to each party. Now, let us discuss a few paradigms of human interaction that Stephen Covey has discussed in The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. 1. Win-lose. If I win, you lose. Win-lose people are prone to use position, power, credentials, and personality to get their way. 2. Lose-win. I lose, you win. Lose-win people are quick to please and appease and seek strength from popularity or acceptance. 3. Lose-lose. Both people lose. When two win-lose people get together, that is, when two determined, stubborn, ego-invested individuals interact, the result will be lose-lose. Win-win or no deal. Both people win. 
Agreements or solutions are mutually beneficial and satisfying to both parties. If you can't reach an agreement that is mutually beneficial, there is no deal. The best option is to create win-win situations. With win-lose or lose-win, one person appears to get what he wants for the moment, but the results will negatively impact the relationship between those two people going forward. The win-win or no deal option is important to use as a backup. When we have no deal as an option in our mind, it liberates us from needing to manipulate people and push our own agenda. We can be open and really try to understand the underlying issues. Another important factor in seeking win-win situations is to maintain an abundance mentality or the belief that there's plenty out there for everyone. Most people operate with the scar city mentality, meaning they act as though everything is zero sum. In other words, if you get it, I don't. People with scar city mentality have a very hard time in sharing recognition or credit and find it difficult to be genuinely happy about other people's successes. The more committed we are to win-win, the more powerful our influence will be. <coughs> Lastly, the spirit of win-win can't survive in an environment of competition. As an organization, we need to align our reward system with our goals and values and have the systems in place to support win-win. So, what are the key lessons? Get yourself to start thinking win-win with these challenges. One, think about an upcoming interaction where you'll be attempting to reach an agreement or solution. Write down a list of what the other person is looking for. Next, write a list next to that of how you can make an offer to meet those needs. Two, identify three important relationships in your life. Think about what you feel the balance is in each of those relationships. Do you give more than you take? Take more than you give? Write down 10 ways to always give more than you take with each one. Three, deeply consider your own interaction tendencies. Are they win-lose? How does that affect your interactions with others? Determine whether or not this approach serves you well in your relationships. Write all of this down. Viewers, you can watch part B of the summary of Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people through the link in card above and description below. Here, I need to remind you that Mr. Smart is not just another YouTube channel. It is a complete learning and self-development platform. Visit the website mrsmart.org for more content, quizzes, and courses. Also, join the Smart Club through the link in pinned comment for illustrations, PDF version, and detailed quiz for each new animation. Subscribe and hit the bell button for future updates. Live long, smart living.